Hello, this video will go through how to download Qual2e for use in CE5366, and you can use it elsewhere if you wish. And what we're going to do is I'm um, going to navigate to the, I'll log in in a second and navigate to the server where the uh, software is located. And we're going to download an executable file and a couple of dynamic link libraries needed to support its execution. <laughs> Stupid machine. Okay, so I'm logged into my uh, Windows 10 environment. And this is a virtual environment, but it should work um, pretty much the same. Go to the browser. Yeah, it looks like I'm doing this on. Come on. There, that should be big enough. And the course website is here. We go into the software tab, and it doesn't matter if you choose the Mac or the Windows, they go to the same place for Qual2e. And here is the uh, repository. Um, now I'm assuming that you're here because you want to do it on Windows. So here's the Windows directory. It says Windows 10 Qual2 EU builds and this uh, bear in mind is a work in progress. Next in the directory called bin there's one, two, three, four, five files all of which have to be downloaded. I elected to keep them I elected to keep them separated, um, not to make life harder, but uh, as this gets recompiled, the required DLLs might change. Uh, the message file is also important. So what I'll do is I'm going to make myself a location to download it. And I want to go to C, um, users, that's me, and I have my own little download directory here, and I'm hoping this is in my uh, Windows environment. I'm doing this on a virtual machine hosted on a Macintosh, so this is a little bit, uh, it's going to be very similar for you, but not identical. So let me go ahead and download the object into local disk. Looks like I've already built a destination for it. Let's verify that. Local disk, users, Theodore, desktop. Sure enough, there's Q call to E. Well, let me go ahead and delete all this stuff here. Okay, so um, we're going to send it to a directory called call to E that's on my Windows desktop. We choose save. And we'll do the same with this DLL. Send it to the same location, save this DLL, send it to the same location, save this DLL, send it to the same location, save, and the message file, send it to the same location, save, and we verify the arrival over here. So the files have arrived. Okay, we're also going to want some example input files. The one I recommend is uh, workshop 1.dat save target as let's see workshop 1.dat save target as It's putting extensions on because it's a computer and its purpose in life is to make us want to end our ours. Okay, so there's our download to, uh, to check that it will run. So I will minimize that because I don't really need that. And now I want to open up a uh, um, command prompt editor and let me 
do a little bit of real estate work here. I'll make it bigger later, but I want to change directory to my desktop. Change directory to qual2e, run a dir, and verify that everything is there. Okay, the important thing is uh, this one that has the window on it for Windows and these DLLs. All right. Now we type qual2e32-win.exe and we have a failure there. And that's because the message file has the incorrect extension. So we'll go change the message file to EAT, accept, and we'll try this again. Type in q2e32-windows.exe, and this is uh, correct behavior. Let me make the window a little bit bigger now. Now the program itself isn't very interesting to watch. It works on input files and produces output files. So if I press the enter key, it's asking for the name of my input file. The one I chose as a test is workshop1.dat. Uh, the output file, WRKSHAP1, I'll call it txt so it should open without any fuss. We'll, ex we'll skip an observed file. Um, it allows us to skip it. And we do have to give it a name for an output file. Um, it's just the way it works. You, if you hit return, it's going to just demand that you name it. So let's give it the output file name. Um, PRT. It's actually just an ASCII file. So workshop one print.txt. And this seemed to run correctly. List our directory, and now we have three separate files that are there, and let's see what happened. Okay, so the input file, we can open it with Notepad, and it's simply an ASCII file, and that is all the input for this particular problem. And if you read the documentation, um, many of the uh, items of input are explained in the documentation. The output file, so this should open good. It opens in Notepad directly. That was my intent. Um, and we'll go make a change to the input file in a second to be for sure that I didn't fake you all out. But this is the output generated by that same uh, input file running through the uh, computer program. Windows has detected that it has not had a chance to infect my computer with something, so it's offering me that. I will ignore it for the time being, and I'll deal with it later. Uh, so it's uh, done all of its uh, runs. This is annoying. Everything about this is annoying. Uh, it's completed the runs, and um, Anyway, it's just pages and pages of numbers for the time being until we get better familiarity with the actual computer program. The point is, is that it uh, it worked as expected. It even draws little uh, plots. Okay, now the reason the plots are a little bit funny is this is from a different time in history when uh, uh, graphics cards or graphics processing units were usually unavailable. And so uh, programmers would use the line printer to generate plots. And so what you're used to as a y-axis is up here, and the x-axis in river miles is over here. OK, just so you can see what the uh, plotting output looks like, um, this is if we were going to run it into. There's other programs that can render that information into a plot. and this is what the uh, file looks like. You could conceivably parse this in R and make your own really pretty plots. Okay, let's verify that it actually has run for us. So we're going to go to the workshop1.dat. We'll open it with Notepad. We're going to change the date. 
possibly in our lifetime. Maybe not. Well, my machine has gone into go slow mode, whatever that is. Not responding. There we go. It has now decided to respond. Let's just make it today's date. Um, 6 November 2018. Okay, so I've just changed the date. Nothing else has changed. I don't want to break anything. So I will file, save it, exit, rerun the program. Oh, don't do that. There we go. Rerun the program. RKSHIP run dot DAT. RKSHOP run dot txt RKSHOP run dot dat dot txt So we've run the program again and the so what is is the date should have changed in that output file. Let's find out. Sure enough has the new date, and that is a full output file. So that's how to get um, Qual2 to be running on your computers. And be, remember, you got to get the DLLs as well as the executable file. Thank you for your attention, and uh, good luck. Your job is to basically replicate what I just did in the video on your computer. Uh, be sure that you put everything in uh, some kind of directory and you don't get stuff littering in your desktop. And um, don't, uh, don't install these executables someplace where you're not, you can't find them. You want to be able to destroy stuff easily. And that concludes the video.